using proxy media to edit 4K video on the MacBook. I love my MacBook. It's one of my favorite Apple products in a very long time, but there's no denying that it has some challenges when handling processor intensive tasks like video editing, for instance. Now with exporting, it's perfectly fine because exporting uses own chip hardware encoding. Whereas everything else with regard to editing video, browsing throughout the timeline, etc., can be a little stressful to the Core M processor. So I'm gonna show you how to use proxy media to make editing, browsing throughout the timeline, adding effects, make that all a lot smoother. So the first thing I wanna do here is make sure I have create proxy media checked under the transcoding option on the import panel. And then I'm going to create a new event and I'll just call it UE roll two. All right. And instead of importing all of the files, I'm actually just going to limit this to two files. So these two initial video files will have proxy media created upon import. All right. So I'm going to just click import, select it. All right, and those are importing right now. Now I'm going to select the other three files and I'm going to uncheck create proxy media. So when these import, proxy media will not be created, just the original files will be imported there. So one of the disadvantages of using proxy media is that it takes time to transcode the original files into proxy. And what proxy files are basically are the original video files downsampled. They're basically half resolution files so that it works much smoother in the timeline. You're not trying to work with full 4K or 1080p files. And just remember that these new proxy files are taking up space on your hard drive as well. So you're basically not doubling the amount of space taken up, but there is additional space required because you're creating brand new files. Now I have inserted all four or all five of the video files, the original media video files. That means these are full 4K files into the timeline and you can see how choppy it is. Like for instance, when you move the playhead, you can just see it kind of jerk. And when you're trying to scrub through the timeline, it's just not smooth and it's it feels like it's weighed down uh, under the, the limitations of that Core M processor in the MacBook. It's just not smooth at all. Not anything like working on an iMac or uh, some other more powerful machine that is much better at handling video and editing video. But that's where proxy media comes into play. So if we select that file, that first file, click info under the inspector, you'll see that there is proxy media available for that file and for this one because we selected them to create proxy media upon import. Now the other three files do not have proxy media. You can of course create them after the fact by right clicking, selecting transcode media, selecting create proxy media, and then clicking okay, or you can just click generate proxy media within the info tab of the inspector as well. Now, here's another downside of creating proxy media. Like I said, it does use system resources. So it will require processing power because you are creating brand new files. And you can see right now, it's kind of loading here, creating that new file using the CPU, uh, taxing your machine a little bit. And also it's gonna use more space because it's creating new files. Now, if we click the view button and then select proxy under media, it's going to force the timeline. It's going to force the viewer to display proxy media only. So you can see those three media files, the little red where it says missing proxy, that's saying that because there's no proxy media available just yet. But now watch what happens when I convert that. Eventually, it's going to display because it's been converted, that original file has been converted to a proxy file. Uh, and we're gonna do the same thing for those last two files here. So it's no longer gonna say missing proxy once I create proxy media for those last two files. So I can just click here in the browser, select that file, and then under the info tab of the inspector, click generate proxy for both files and it's going to create those proxy files. Now I've sped this up a little bit, so it's not exactly one-to-one -one how long it's gonna take for you. Obviously it depends on your source media, how big that source media is as to how long it's gonna to take to transcode and create those new proxy files. But as you can see here, we have the entire timeline now contains proxy media and just observe how much quicker it is to go through the timeline, move our playhead, media starts playing instantly because it's half resolution, so not nearly as taxing as those full 4K files. Now make sure that you do not try to export media while in proxy view because it's going to produce an inferior file. So you wanna go back to the view button, go back to optimize original under media, 
and go back to original media before exporting. Think of it like this. Original media is for exporting and proxy media is for the actual editing process because it's much easier to edit with lesser resolution files while on a lesser machine than it is to work with the original media. So can you edit 4K video in Final Cut Pro 10 on a machine like the MacBook? Yes, you can if you harness the power of proxy media.